Good afternoon, everyone. I ran across this map hanging on a wall. I noticed the volcanoes at the bottom, four going off, referencing this area in Italy to look for. This map was era 1300s, and here we are, Italy, at least three of those showing signs of uptick. The other volcano over to the right off of Kilimanjaro, Jabal Tar. That's at the end of the East Africa Rift Zone out there in the Gulf. When we're looking at repeating patterns, we're starting to see massive floods, which could refill some of these lakes that have been dry for centuries or millennia. And looking on Google Earth here to try to find some of the volcanoes, looks like these lakes are refilling themselves. And the reason I was looking in that direction is because Africa's baobab tree, all of the oldest of this species are all dying at the exact same time right now. Grand solar minimum agriculture, microgreens, that's one incredible way the ADAPT 2030 link to trueleafmarket.com below in the description box as well as all the links to tonight's slides and stories. And if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that bell for notifications and the subscribe button. So I ran across this interesting map. It was pre-Antarctic discovery replication here. Somewhere a compilation of maps from the 1300s to the 1500s. And as I snapped this while it was on the wall, I noticed that there were volcanoes under the bottom of both hemispheres. So I noticed right away Vesuvius, Stromboli, and Etna. Head of the other one I couldn't even find anywhere. Maybe it's under a different name. So then I thought, all right, if these maps were compiled during grand solar minimums of prior wolf minimum, something around where there in the 1300s perhaps once all four of these same volcanoes start to go off you could have that as a signal of this cycle's repeating itself so again i'm just looking back in ancient history i'm just looking at a map where they show all these erupting volcanoes at the exact same time pointing them out here on the modern google map and when we take a look at the activity all of those are heightened activity the other volcano I just could not find, that one called Hedda. Maybe it's a different name at a different time a thousand years later. But on Volcano Discovery, they have the volcanoes of Italy. And I left the link to Volcano Discovery as well in the description box. Now moving over to Kilimanjaro, those are the African mountains and volcanoes. And about halfway down, you'll see Jabal Tar. So where is this anyway? It's in the Gulf, right at the end of the East African Rift Zone with all the active volcanoes. It itself erupted in 2007. I'm going to put some borders on here so you can see Yemen up to the north, Eritrea, get a good gauge, Somalia on the right there to the east. Now this is an area right here where the African plate and the Arabian plate are coming together. Now, for it was something to do with pressure and cosmic rays, exciting magma chambers, which is correlated through peer-reviewed research of silica-rich magma chambers. You wonder how much push and pull there'll be on this plate here. So, if the map also showed this volcano in the 1300s as being active, we might want to look for this Jebel Tar to start off again or something in this region here. View from a ship here, it looks like a small island. You can definitely see the two plumes coming out of the center. Now, zooming in on Google Earth here, you can see the island for sure. The cone in the center and the lava flows that had come out. That was from 2007. The last large eruption that they have recorded, 1750 plus or minus 50 years. That map reproduction you're looking at is 400 years in the past prior to even this eruption. Zooming in here, you can see the heel of Yemen. Now, notice those other volcanoes near Sana'a. In scanning the Hamas Dahmar region northwest, you can see the volcanic crater up there, really visible. But it's more of a plain where you can see the different cinder cones. It's a lava field, if you will. And even this more coastal volcano, Hara Sawad, erupting 1253 again. That is right in the middle of a grand solar minimum. You can see the two cones there pretty cleanly above the ridge line. And I want to bring in here, I was thinking about electrical discharge the whole time I'm looking at these ground scenes look so electric in origin. So I'll put some contrast on this one. And it might have been one of those days meshing and overlapping because in the morning I actually looked at this article, Africa Baobab Trees 
have been dying at an alarming rate, and it's all the oldest of the species. They're finding eight out of the 13 oldest have died, and five out of the six largest have died off as well. It's a little bit unusual what's happening because these trees live to be a thousand years old, but they're finding the same thing. All across Southern Africa range, these bulbab trees are dying in a very short time span. When we're looking at the grand solar minimum, if this now is affecting thousand year old trees in the climate habitat, that's shifting because animals and trees are well ahead of humans in sensing these changes coming on. This is what the grand solar minimum forecast looks like. And here all these same things are happening at the same time with our floods on the thousand year time frame, snowstorms on the once in a thousand year, tree species once in a thousand years. But they do have jacaranda trees down there, so I wonder how these large trees are also faring as the climate changes more in Zimbabwe. Because if you want to talk about an enormous amount of shift in jet stream patterns, altering precipitation, Somalia is right where you need to start. Just earlier in the year, they had these massive floods that displaced 2 million people. You have to realize, 2 million people got flooded out of where they live. and province overflies with helicopter flights. It was like this, village after village, city after city. Because when you're taking into account these types of, you know, Holocene versus modern looks at the Sahel, we're gonna have to go back several thousand years to find patterns where lakes are now refilling, which used to be dry even a few years ago, just dry desert lake beds. But since these rains have started in earnest last year and now really have amplified, even on Google Earth, look at these areas inland filling up again. It's definitely connected to the grand solar minimum. Even down in Kenya, they've been receiving floods, and now you have these what were once dry pans already starting to refill and vegetation regrowing again. You see the same thing in Australian outback when they're bone dry forever, and then there's a flood and it comes out green. Where's it going to go to next? Is it going to continue to get more precipitation, or will it go back to dry? And looking at it a bit of a wide out here, here's another one of the volcanoes I was looking at, Dama Ali, almost straight in the center. That close in I showed you of all the lake district is right there, but look how it's almost becoming a, an inland delta in its own right. So looking back in the past at these maps, can we see what's happening and combine it with current circumstance? Not just a single eruption, but if all four of these volcanoes in the same area of Italy start to go off, that's a signal that this is repeating what's on the map. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you like this type of content, I also do a podcast, Mini Ice Age Conversations, available on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, so you can listen while going about your day and still get informed.